and welcome to Study Topics. This week we will be covering the ASIA scale. Now, ASIA stands for American Spinal Injury Association and is used to classify spinal cord injuries. It was developed as a universal classification tool for spinal cord injuries based on a standardized sensory and motor assessment. So let's look into that a little bit more. Now, if we take a look at the motor aspect, you will see that you have a few different tests to perform. So I want to make it clear here that you need to have a basic understanding of how the tests are performed to allow you to better understand each level of impairment. It is not important important to know how to perform ASIA testing for your exam, okay? Rather, it's just expected that you know the impairments such as what is ASIA A versus what is ASIA D, okay? So keep that in mind as we're going through this scale. So if we take a look at the motor aspect, we'll see that in the motor exam, there are 10 muscle groups that are tested. These muscle groups are innervated by the cervical and lumbosacral nerve roots. The Asia system does not include the abdominal muscles, i.e., you know, T10 to 11, because the thoracic levels are much easier to determine from sensory levels. It also excludes certain muscles like the hamstrings because these segmental levels are, that innervate them um, are already represented by other muscles that are tested. I want to draw your attention to the muscle of the anal sphincter. Now, it is innervated by S4 and S5 nerve, root, nerve roots and represents the end of the spinal cord. The anal sphincter is a critical part of the spinal cord injury examination. If the person has voluntary anal contraction or VAC, regardless of any other finding, that person is by definition a motor incomplete injury, okay, which is less severe than a complete injury. We'll talk about this a little bit more coming up. Let's take a look at the sensory aspect of this exam. Now, the sensory level is determined by performing light touch and pinprick. The most caudal level with intact sensation defines a level of involvement. So if we put this all together to bring it back to what you need to know for your exam, the level of the lesion is defined as the most caudal segment of the spinal cord with normal sensory and motor function on both sides. All right, I'm going to try to make it even more clear for you. For your exam, again, you need to be able to identify what level of impairment means what. So there's a bit of a trick to remembering the Asia scale. And it comes back to that voluntary anal contraction, okay? And we have the sensory around there as well. So we call it deep anal pressure. If the patient presents with no sensory function, so no DAP, deep anal pressure, below S4, S5, then they are a complete SCI, a complete spinal cord injury, okay? The only Asia impairment level that can be classified as complete is Asia A. All others are incomplete, so Asia A is the most involved, all right? So if we break this down, Asia A is no sensory and no motor, complete. Asia B is sensory but no motor, so we know that this is incomplete. Asian C and D are differentiated by how many muscles have strength either less than grade 3 or more than grade 3, okay? So here's the only part that's really tricky. If it's more than half, or if more than half of the muscles uh, are less than grade three, then that means that they're more involved. So we would give this a Asia C. Said another way, if more than half of the muscles are grade two, it would be Asia C, okay? Now, if we take a look at Asia D, if more than half of the muscles are greater than three, then it would be Asia D less involved. All right, let's test your knowledge with a question to make sure you really understand what's going on here. So your patient has no motor or sensory function preserved in the sacral segments, S4 and 5. Which of the following is true? Now take a few seconds to think this through and feel free to pause me if you need to. The answer is B. When your patient has no motor or sensory function, remember they will always be classified as Asia A or a complete injury. 
Asia A is the only level that is complete. I'm repeating myself. All the others are incomplete. So there's not enough information in the question to determine the patient's level of function, um, meaning, you know, where they're at as far as S4, S5. So C and D are incorrect, leaving B is the correct answer. Okay, let's do another little test here. Your patient has a C7 incomplete spinal cord lesion. With testing, they have less than grade 3 strength in six key muscles. Which Asian impairment scale would you use to classify them? Again, pause me if you need to. But the answer here is that your patient, because they have this key muscle, we, um, and it's giving us that they're grade three in six key muscles, we need to think about that. So here's a hint. Remember, with motor testing, you are testing 10 key muscles, C5 to T1 and L2 to S1. So if there are six less than grade three, it's going to be more involved, and that means we're going to have an Asia C, motor incomplete, more than half the key muscles. And remember, we're testing 10 of those muscles below the neurological level have a muscle grade of less than three. So the answer is Asia C. All right, I hope I uh, simplified a rather challenging topic for some of you, and thank you so much for joining me this week. Thanks for checking out Study Topics. My name is Caitlin, founder of PT Exam Prep. Our goal is to help you prepare for your upcoming licensing exam. So please subscribe to our channel to make sure you're up to date with all of our newest posts.